Hello, good morning friends. Welcome back to your favorite channel Code One Digest. Today in this tutorial, we will learn about Node.js JavaScript API project with Redis Cache. Yes, friend. In this tutorial, I will explain you how can you write Node.js and connect it with a Redis Cache as a backend. You would have heard about Redis Cache. We use it for the fast database operation and for the fast data retrieval operations. Hence, in this tutorial, I'll show you how can you write Node.js API project and use Redis as a backend. So stay with me. Watch this video till end. It is going to be very, very exciting and very, very useful information. If you want to learn Node.js, if you want to run Redis Cache, then this is the tutorial for you. Okay, friends. So here is the agenda of this tutorial today. I'll explain you what is this project all about. I'll give you brief about Node.js Redis project. Then what all prerequisite required for this project? What all software and dependencies we have for this project? Then I'll explain you the architecture of this project. How Node.js application is going to interact with Redis Cache? How are we connecting it? All of that we'll understand with an architecture diagram. Then I'll explain you what is Redis Cache. If you're not sure about Redis Cache, then I'll explain you. I'll take a few minutes to explain the Redis Cache. Then I'll explain you how to set up Redis Cache and what is Redis Insight. Then I'll show you the Node.js JavaScript API project setup. I'll show you the coding of Node.js API project. Finally, we'll be testing our Node.js API with the Redis Cache. Later, I'll be summarizing what we learn in this tutorial. Okay, friends. So stay with me and watch this tutorial till end. Okay, friends. So here is a prerequisite of this project. We need node server and I'm using version 18. You can use the latest version of the node. Then in node, I'm using express module and the version is 4.17.1. I'm also using Redis module in node and the version is 3.0.2. So this is very important here. Please make sure you are using the same Redis module what I am using 3.0.2 because functions, methods, libraries I am referring is part of this version 3.0.2. If you are going to use any other version, then the code may not work. So stick to this version for this demo. Then later, if you want to work with any other version, then you can change the code accordingly because the function name, method name and libraries may change. I'll be using Redis server, Redis installation of 7.2. That's okay. This is fine that this you can install the latest version. I'm using Redis Insight version of 2.34. Now, let me explain you the project with a simple architecture diagram, what we are trying to do. So we have a node server and it is running express module. It is giving us the capabilities of get API and post API and so on. Client is interacting through API, through a node server and node server is connecting to a Redis cache. We are storing data into a Redis and we'll be pushing data and retrieving data from the Redis cache. And always remember, Redis stores the data in form of key and value. It's a key value storage. Friends, before we proceed in this video, I request you to subscribe this channel to grow Code One Digest family. Friends, I'm creating a lot of quality videos on programming, coding concepts, design pattern and design principles, cloud and container technologies, but I'm not getting subscribers. I request you to like, share and subscribe this channel so that I can grow our Code One Digest family. Thank you. Okay friends, so let us understand what is Redis. It's an open source in-memory data storage used as a database, cache, streaming engine or even a message broker. It supports saving data as a string, hashes, list, sets, sorted sets with range queries, bitmaps, hyperlogs, and so on. There are a lot of options available the way you can store the data. Redis stands for Remote Dictionary Server. It is kind of a NoSQL data storage and always stores data in form of key and value pair. Redis Cache leverages its in-memory storage capabilities allowing application to store and retrieve data extremely faster. Whenever we use any backend database like be a relational database or any other database, like Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, it takes time to fire query and get data. When we have heavy load situation, then we want to cache frequently used data 
in that scenario we use redis cache because redis cache is very fast in retrieving data we get the data from backend storage we save it into a redis cache and then we serve it from redis cache i hope the concept of redis is clear i have opened my terminal and first what we'll do is i will install the redis into my local and we'll start the redis server first right so let me do that i have a command to download the redis image from docker hub repository so here is a command i am using redis alpine let me show the command to you so the command is docker pull redis alpine so this is the version that i am downloading so let me do that it will take a couple of minutes to download let's see yes so it's downloading so it says it is downloaded right now let us see if it's there in image list yeah so this is there in our image list redis alpine we just downloaded docker ps so nothing is running so we'll now start our redis server using this command and see if it is up and running the size of redis is 37 mb we want to run that redis image into a docker container hence we'll do that now let me show you the command to start the redis server in a docker container yes so here is the command to start redis server in a docker container if you see docker run minus int means minus i means interactive it will directly take us into the container and t is for tty support p minus p option is for the port mapping we want to map the docker container port with our local host port so that we can access it outside so we are doing this port mapping so that 6379 port is available to us on in a local host machine and minus the option is to deattach that means it will start the server and deattach the console this is the name of my container and this is the tag i am going to deploy so let me copy this command and we'll start this server and let's go back to console here if you see docker ps nothing is running docker ps minus minus all we don't have any redis container running as of now right so i'll paste that command here yes yeah, so here is a command docker run minus it minus p for port mapping minus g minus hyphen hyphen name yeah so let's start yes so it is started let us see that docker ps it says that our ready server is started now what i'll do is i'll try to connect to this first with our redis inside so that we are sure that it is up and running and we are able to do few basic operations let me do that okay friends so now i have opened my redis inside and here is the connection detail i'm giving 127.0.0.1 and this is a port what i'm connecting to so here is the port just apply changes and say connect we can test the connection so say connection is successful that means it is able to connect to redis server just go inside right so it is connected now what we'll do is we'll try to insert few keys let me do that so i want to insert as a string and i'll say no limit key name as channel and value is code one digest say add key so it is added here this is the key name and this is a value we'll add one more and it's again a string tutorial name value node.js redis demo so we have these two keys and their respective value that means our redis server is working and we are able to insert the data you can also search the data with the key let's say if i want to search tutorial so it will show tutorial name yeah so it shows that this is the key now what we'll do is we'll write our node.js application to connect to redis cache now it's time for us to start creating our node.js application which will connect to the redis server so very first thing is you have to create a directory where you want to set up your node.js application so i have created a directory if you see this is a directory i have created and i am inside the directory uh, i'll say npm init minus y so this will initialize my project so it has created if you see it has created a package.json file right so this is the package.json file creator if you see ls and cat package.json so this these are the content 
right now we have to add few dependencies right we'll install the express and we'll install the redis let me do that so why we have to install redis because it will provide us the driver and all those configuration all those supporting files so that we can communicate we can interact with the redis server that is running in our local uh, now i'll open the visual studio code and start coding it i'll write a file uh, where i'll define all the interfaces and connection to redis and then we'll start our application okay friends now i have opened visual studio code and this is my project node.js redis demo this is my package.json the very first file where we define the dependencies and you have to make a note of this that dependencies inside the dependencies i am using express module and redis module and you must be sure about these versions use exactly these versions otherwise the code may not work examples i am giving you will work only with these particular versions if you install the latest version then you may have to check for the latest libraries and functions the example what i am giving you will work only with this version so make a note of this express 4.17.1 and redis especially redis is 3.0.2 right so i have defined this two dependencies now what i'll do is i'll go to console just do npm install so it will install all the dependencies for me yes so it is done now i'll show you the code that i have written for a node.js api project and this will connect to our redis cache the very first line we are defining we require express module then we require redis module and from util module we would require a promise right now what we are doing is from express module we are taking a object of an app and then we are using app.use express.json right so this is where our application is getting defined this is a place where we are creating our redis connection from redis object we are saying redis.create client and providing the port and ip of our server so this i have defined as an environment variable i will be defining this as an environment variable redis server ip and it will connect to redis server on this port and it will give me a redis client now using redis client i am calling redis client dot on and then creating the get and set object using promiseify so i am saying redis client dot set bind redis client and i am taking that into a redis set same way i am doing redis client dot get bind redis client uh, taking into a redis get from line number 17 i am defining my endpoints so this is the post endpoint where i'll be pushing a data that means this is this will be used to set information set values right so slash set values and then line number 20 i am saying redis set right this redis set i am calling and redis set is nothing but this is constant redis set request dot body dot key and request dot body dot value so we'll be sending the data in form of json and it will have a key and value right so those value will go and saved into redis so once this is done then we'll send a response accordingly so this is about post endpoint now we'll have another endpoint get endpoint where we want to get the value of a particular key so get value slash key this will be the endpoint we are saying redis get by passing the request dot params dot key so it will be reading it from params so just be careful here we are using request dot params dot key we are reading the key from our endpoint from our url hence we are saying params dot key once we pass the key it will get the value for that key from the redis and return the value and then we are saying response dot json value so it will return the value for me and this two lines are to start our server so our server node server will start at at port 3000 so let's do that now i hope the code is very simple and very clear just one page application and you will be able to interact you will be able to connect to redis server through your api so what i'll do is now i'll start server node application and then we'll test this endpoint okay friends with me now i'll go to the console and run this application and see if it is able to connect to ready server and and i'll show you how to test these endpoints let me go to the console so this is my terminal let me clear this and i am already there in my project directory let me do ls so all these files are there in my project 
and this is a file index.js that we are going to use. So what I'll do is node index.js. Let us do that. Yes, so it says server started at port 3000. Now what I'll do is I'll try to hit the endpoint and see if you are able to get the data. If you remember, we have inserted few records into our Redis server, right? So now what we'll do is we'll try to get the key tutorial name and see if we are getting data. Let me take you to the postman. This is a collection what I have created node.js redis demo. And here I have two endpoints. First we'll test the get endpoint. This is a get value endpoint http localhost 3000 get value. This is the endpoint and, and this is a key. So here the key that we'll use is tutorial name. So we'll use the tutorial name and then we'll hit. Let me do that. Yes, we got the value node.js redis demo. Get operation is absolutely working fine. We'll try to insert few records. So we'll use post endpoint localhost 3000 set value. Now in set value, we'll select the raw and then this is my JSON. So we'll say key channel and value is code bandages. We'll call this. We'll see if this is getting saved into our Redis cache. It says 200 response. That means the operation is successful. Let me try to get that key now channel and see what happens. Yes, we are getting the value for this channel. This is a value code one digest what we have inserted here, right? First name is a key and the value is Pavan. Let me send this and now we'll test it here. First name. Yeah, we are getting the response. That means it is working fine. That application is able to give you the response, right friends? That means our endpoints are absolutely working fine. We have tested the get endpoint and we have tested the set endpoint. We are able to insert data into Redis cache and we are able to retrieve the data using that key from the Redis cache through Node.js API. Friends, you need not to worry about the code. The code is available in this GitHub repository. I'm sharing this code in my GitHub repository, code one digest, and this is a project name, Node.js Redis demo. So go to this repository and you can download the code. Just clone this repository using this URL and then run it in your local. I have also provided all the commands required to set up your application to install Redis and how to set up Node.js application. So all those commands are available. Just download this project and start using it and then you can modify it as per your requirement. Okay friends, so now let me summarize what we learned in this tutorial today. I explain you what is Node.js Redis project, what we are trying to do. Then I shown you what all prerequisite dependencies I have, what all softwares you required, what all node modules you required for this project. Then I explain you the architecture diagram, what are we trying to achieve, how the node server will connect to Redis and how the data will flow from Redis to node to client. I also explain you what is Redis cache, how do we use it, where do we use it. Then I have shown you the Redis installation and how do you connect Redis inside. It's a GUI interface for your Redis cache. Then I have shown you the Node.js JavaScript API project. I have shown you the code that we have written. I have explained you the package.json file. I have shown you my index.js file where I have written all the code and defined the API endpoints the way we are connecting to our Redis server. And finally, we have tested all the Node.js API endpoints fire the get and post call to get data to insert data successfully. Right friend. So if you like this video, so give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel to do subscribe to my channel to grow code one digest family. Friends, if you like this video, so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for the more interesting videos. Click on the bell icon for the latest video notifications and do not forget to share this video with all your friends and colleagues. This is very useful information for students, beginners and software engineers. I am putting a lot of efforts in creating this contents. So please help me growing the Code One Digest family. Please subscribe to Code One Digest channel for the latest programming and technology related videos. Thank you.